welcome to another edition of The Magic Show. This week I want to take a look at a really sweet fan-made set based around a little thing called Star Wars. Yes, the nerd hen has come home to roost very soon with The Force Awakens coming out, and Reddit user Whiny Tortoise has made 283 cards to give you a fascinating look at what translating a well-known franchise could look like in Magic. The best way I think I could do this is to explain the colors and combinations of colors in Magic and what they mean to this Star Wars universe. There are new card types, mechanics, and all kinds of flavor wrapped up in this one, so let's check it out. First, I gotta talk about the starships. Yes, there are X-Wings, Y-Wings, gunships, TIE Interceptors, Tri-Fighters, and so much more. Used in the future site frame, they quickly and easily distinguish themselves as unique and interesting cards. But you can't just block an X-Wing with a Wookiee, which of course brings us to the space flight mechanic. Yes, it's basically just shadow or horsemanship, but who cares? Flavor, people, it's delicious. So that's the truly new card type and distinguishing mechanic for the set. Let's back up a bit and discuss the basic lands. The forests are where else? They're on Endor. Most of the mountains are from the Revenge of the Sith Final Battle, and the swamps are, of course, on Dagobah, home of our favorite little green Jedi. The islands feature Coruscant, while the plains feature Hoth and the Tatooine Desert, but it is the non-basic lands and some common artifacts that really detail where the factions, races, and loyalties lie. What we know as Bant represent the Jedi. The Jedi Enclave and Jedi Holocron define green, white, and blue will represent the positive side of the Force. The Tri-Fetch land is pretty damn spippy if you ask me. There's also the Jedi Temple, and this unique cycle has a really sweet end of the battlefield mana and tabbing for other colors later, a unique design that I wouldn't be surprised if it shows up in an actual magic set in the future. The Jedi mechanic is Meditate, as showcased so clearly on a Jedi Knight. I also love the payoff cards like Jedi Training that is very specific to the faction and benefits it so clearly, or cards like Plo Koon who make the mechanic go from good to amazing. There are Jedi in all three colors, of course, but it is the tricolor that hold the classic characters like Obi-Wan. And check out Princess Leia. N no, I mean the card guys. Oh, whatever, she is six mana for basically a 5-5 five five that makes three two twos along with pumping many of the creatures you already have in player. That's like, that's like Grave Titan stats, people, or better. It's awesome. And is there Luke Skywalker? Of course there's Luke Skywalker. Super cool design, protects himself and gets really scary really fast. There's Qui-Gon Jinn who is sweet, but Mace Windu, far sweeter. This badass Vincer-like Jedi can meditate himself back to your hand for additional shenanigans. Can you show your force mastery? I know I want to. Each faction has their own planeswalker, and the Jedi's is who else? Yoda. Jedi Master is a BA with appropriate BA-like stats that meshes well with so many enders the battlefield triggers, but I'm nowhere near done with the Jedi. Each faction gets its own modal spell, and for the Jedi it is the wisdom of the Jedi. Of course, you could also just perform a Jedi mind trick, and Man, is that thing flavorful. I love it. And spaceships, there's the X-Wing and Y-Wing, but hell yeah, there's the Jedi Starfighter being totally awesome and picking up a creature to ride in it until end of turn. And there's a hybrid in the form of N1 Starfighter, and holy crap, the Naboo Royal Starship is insanely powerful. Five mana almost unblockable with a thieving magpie ability? That's what I'm talking about. And wow, bombing run? Talk about your flavor home runs. This spell is so incredibly sweet and resonates like few others. But what would you imagine a legendary Bant-colored spaceship would be? look like. Hell yes, the Millennium Falcon, a card that just goes nuts with all of your Jedi and entering the battlefield triggers. Esper and Magic is known for artifacts, and in this set it represents the droids and the Trade Federation. The Droid Factory and Separatist Holocron both produce blue, black, and white along with the Droid Factory. The Droid mechanic is repair. Kind of like a reverse suspend, it just ensures that the stupid droids never stop coming. They're coming for you, bro endlessly. We got security droids and probe droids, droid commandos, droid deca, and the maintenance droid is a fantastic payoff as it punishes your opponent while you wait for your droids to return. Don't want to pay for them again when the time comes? Well, why not get them back instantly with March of the Droids? The big flavor win for the droids is, who else? The two most iconic, R2 and C-3PO, are fantastic. You want to just get them in harm's way and they will reward you for it. Awesome. Even the Jawas join the fun with cards like Salvage Squad. The faction Sweet Starship? Why? It's the Trade Federation Battleship, no less. And check out that tank droid. Attacks, blocks, or dies? Love it. And you gotta dig the sweet, legendary creatures associated with them, like Newt Gunray and Watto. Their modal spell, Unity of the Droids, gets rid of those pesky non-artifact creatures, and their planeswalker, Count Dooku, fits right into their strategy of getting all the droids out there by sacrificing artifacts, which are most likely other droids. Lastly, they get the badassian General Grievous. Being generally grievous 
as you do. The John colors of green, black, and red are represented by the bounty hunters of Star Wars. They hang out in underworld slums and in Jabba's palace while using the outlaw holocron to produce colors of mana that represent them. Their mechanic is bounty, which are triggered abilities that fire when a creature with a bounty counter on it dies. This is super cool and flavorful as suddenly having a bounty on your head is very relevant. Fulfill contract gives you both of these in one. You can mark and then kill a creature, getting bounty bonuses as a result. Cards like private contract and acquire target help it along and check out the sweet flavor of Hut Crime Lord. There's already a bounty on his head. That's awesome. While there aren't a ton of creatures with the mechanic, they got plenty of non-creature spells that feature it. Check out Scout the Perimeter to both rampant growth and mark someone for death. The Bounty Hunter's modal spell is one of the strongest. Ferocity of the Underworld gives you the option of an instant regrowth, abrupt decay, or fork. That's what I'm talking about. Their big payoff spell is Hunt to Extinction, and man, is it awesome. Order 66 is a pretty fantastic Plague Wind variant, and we got all the legendary bounty hunters. There's Bosk, Django Fett, Salacious B. Crumb, and who shot first again? There's Greedo. But the ultimate bounty hunter is, of course, Boba Fett, and no Boba Fett would be complete without Slave One. Their planeswalker is none other than Jabba the freaking Hutt, who gains loyalty not only from his ability, but also when a creature with a bounty counter dies. Counters he's happily giving out. Naya, as we know it, is green, white, and red, and it represents the beasts, Wookiees, and Ewoks of Star Wars. Powered by the Wild Holocron and their jungle village, we can visit Endor to check out the Bright Tree Village. The mechanic they use is Monstrosity. Taken from Theros, of course, this mechanic is super flavorful when it comes to beasts who just get angrier and scarier. The design also stretches the Monstrosity mechanic as seen on gruesome testing, or transforming the Sarlacc Pit into something that'll come and get you. We all know you gotta let the Wookiee win, like when they show dominance. Or how about the Wookiee Mystic? who pumps up creatures played using its ability. And there's the legendary Chewbacca who provides a huge boost to his fellow attacker. This boost is similar to the one provided by Blind Worship. Mind of the Wild is a powerful and versatile modal spell, but let's face it, this faction is mostly about beating face. No need for subtlety. And we gotta talk about the Ewoks. They are so sweet in this set. No, seriously, check out Unconditional Love. Ball. But Chief Chirpa ain't messing around. You could have an Ewok ambush on you before you know it. The faction's Planeswalker is also an Ewok, the beloved Wicket. He's making Ewoks, pumping your guys, and generally being awesome always. While this faction doesn't have a legendary starship, it certainly makes sense, and instead they get a friggin' dragon. Greater crate dragon ain't messing around, and all of the plus one plus one counter shenanigans on aggressive spells like Primal Instinct will provide a huge payoff. But I saved the best for last. The colors of Grixis are blue, black, and red, and in this set it showcases the Sith. A devious color triad and magic is matched here with Sith Ruins, Sith Citadel, and power in the Sith Holocron. I love the mechanic name for the Sith, hate, because you know where hate leads, right to red, black, and blue. Triggering off non-combat damage, there are plenty of ways to hurt a player while not in combat, because this set gives you lots of options. There's interrogation, or force drain, creatures like Imperial Gunner, or sometimes you want an even cheaper enabler and you gotta force spark them. There are lots of payoffs for doing said damage, such as Sith Sorcerer to draw a card, the Sith Manipulator to goes from Mana Ward to Falcon Dismisser, no small upgrade. As you move up in rarities, you can see the benefits become larger, such as Force Denial countering spells, or Sith Assassin killing creatures, or Sith Lord doing better than that. I'll kill your dude and make mine insanely huge. Check out the legendary Grand Moff Tarkin. Oh man, that ability is so devious. Turn on my hate cards or give me a card? Your choice. They feature not one, but two equally devious enchantments. While Sith Magic it could be a little hit or miss. Oh boy, does Iron Fist of the Empire live up to its name. I hurt you and my advantage slowly grows. Fantastic. The modal spell, Cruelty of the Sith, is indeed cruel. Cruel Edict, Negate, or a slightly less powerful Blightning at instant speed? I'm sold. Is Darth Maul up in here? You bet. And Asajj Ventress is a very legitimate threat. The amazing legendary Sith starship? Oh yes. Oh Oh yes, the Star Destroyer. So friggin' sweet, you can draw cards, make TIE Fighters, deal damage, this baby's got it all. So cool. But if we're gonna get legendary, let's get super legendary. Is Anakin Skywalker in here? Oh yes. But what about Vader? Oh, you get to transform Anakin into Darth Vader. Oh son, that's what I'm talking about. And note, the plus one plus one counters will stay when he flips. There's no easy answer for a kick-ass Jedi like Anakin. The Planeswalker, none other than Darth Sidious. He's ready to bring the hate and he has a ton of sweet abilities. But we're not done. You ready to have a battle? Because there are some huge battles represented in mythic fashion, all of them featuring XX in the casting cost. 
We have the Battle of Hoth making 4-4 AT-AT creatures, the Battle of Naboo bouncing and drawing cards, the Battle of Yavin making your opponent sack or pay life, the Battle of Geonosis providing a huge boost to your team while hitting your opponent as well, and finally the Battle of Endor to get those Ewok juices flowing. Attack! But you know what people like? Slivers. And in Troopers, we have the Star Wars equivalent. We have Desert Trooper, Snow Trooper, and Deploy the Troops in white. We have Shadow Trooper and Dark Trooper in blue. Heavy Trooper and Death Trooper in black, Speeder Trooper, Shock Trooper, and Rocket Trooper in red, while green has Scout Trooper and Trooper Commando. Hell, there's even the Trooper Land and Camino Cloning Facility. And just like Slivers, they have their Sliver Queen. Well, what do the Troopers got? Why, it's Commander Cody. Oh boy, this guy gives quite the payoff for all his colors of mana cost, and it's hard to imagine losing after he hits the table with almost any other Troopers alongside. But one of the hallmarks of a good fan set is not trying to reinvent the friggin' wheel all the time. There are reprints in this set, and I love them. We have Arrest in White, Preordain in Blue, Doomblade in Black, Lightning Bolt and Smash the Smithereens in Red, and Explore and Predator Strike in Green. And we even got a land too, with Rogue's Passage just working out perfectly, and how Sith is cruel ultimatum, survey says, very Sith. We'll close out the show with some flavor home runs, and one that was so good, so satisfying, it compelled me to make this episode in the first place. First, the equipment. Hell yeah, there's a lightsaber, and even a double-bladed lightsaber. Check out the flavor of Moisture Farm, who grows as you play another land that it seeps the moisture out of. And how perfect is Jar Jar Binks? Everybody hates him, so here, you take this dork. He does nothing but mess you up. That is awesome. Shmi Skywalker is one of the best. She has to die and is replaced with the Tusken Raiders that kill her. Amazing. Lando Calrissian and Han Solo both boost starships, which is sweet, while Admiral Tarkin takes everyone to the skies and provides spaceflight to everyone. Carbonite Chamber? Brilliant. You got control of them, but they can't do anything. Also really dig Padme and Bail Organa. Those have simple but really sweet abilities, but the best. The absolute best. The piece de freaking resistance has to be the Death Star. Oh man. I'm gonna show you this one in stages. First, it's a legendary land. Awesome. Secondly, it provides mana, and just like the Death Star has to do, it charges up. For three counters, it will vindicate a permanent. But for 10, oh my god, for 10 charge counters, destroy target player. Holy crap. That is perfect. Freaking perfect. The design here is absolutely the best. I love it. And when I saw a fan-made set that had this much time and effort put into it, I just had to show you guys. Is this thing perfectly balanced? Eh, probably not. It is, after all, a first draft, as he notes, but it's probably a great set to make a cube from and battle with friends, trying to draft the best Jedi or bounty hunter deck. I also think this shows how wizards could make unique deals with licensees to allow their characters and likenesses transferred to magic cards. Can you imagine this as a sweet box set playing magic with Star Wars characters could be just as much fun as playing Transformer magic or hell, I don't know, Fast and Furious magic. It's silly, but there is potential for any property that people love and enjoy to transfer to our favorite game, and this is an excellent example of it. If you like this, click subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos, and until next time, Magic Players, this is Evan Irwin. Tap on the cards so you don't have to. like the fatties.